Good evening, everyone, no matter where you are, whether in Darwin, Northern Territory, Australia, or around the world. Welcome to Land Rover Rugby Park for Saturday Night Rugby. This is the last round of the regular season where second-placed University are taking on third-place Cougars. It is ladies' day for Cougars, so you will see a crowd over there for the end of the season. Both teams have set their place for the finals as University is second, Cougars in third. But tonight, it's all about bragging rights. It's all about getting some confidence going into the finals. I'm your host, Billy Rees. Rocky won't be here tonight. He's actually hosting Ladies Day, so we know where you're, uh, where the importance for this sport lies with you, Rocky, but uh, you're going to be missed. We do have uh, some international listeners tonight and watchers from New Zealand and the USA, so welcome. Just a few of the other games earlier on. Souths in the Slugger Cup beat Palmerston Crocs 52 to 5. The Slugger Cup's played by both teams every uh, every year in memory of Slugger, who played for both clubs, um, a much-loved player for both clubs, and he did pass away, and both teams passionately have a great have great games every year, and um, he is very well missed. Good to see his father and his brother here today for when they played the Slugger Cup, um, and we hope that uh, he is watching down on every event they have. The teams are set, ready to go. Welcome to Land Rover Rugby Park in Darwin. University will probably use their dominant forward pack today with um, their general, their 5'8", Robbie Butcher out with COVID. Well, sorry, close contact, I should say, not with COVID. So that should really even up the game. Cougars on your right, Uni on your left, and Cougars with a low kick sent it through to Uni and Uni high ball down the winger's throat. He has a bit of a dance but straight into the forwards. Nice platform set by Cougars. Uni having the wood on Cougars recently but Cougars have every opportunity tonight to get one over the team. A little box kick straight into the open play. Oh, and pressure. It wasn't a lot, but he took his time, the fullback, for uh, University, and there was a kick. Did not go anywhere near what it should have. So Vondros for University, he's a quick player. He's got some wheels. He can get some speed when he needs to. But at that point, uh, just that one player from Coog has put the pressure right on him. Just while we've got a delay chasing the ball here at the moment, um, just as we uh, look at the field, number three for Cougars is Lance Poaching. Um, he is actually a... His daughter plays for South Darwin under sixes, who happen to be um, my superstar team. So um, Lance, just putting it out there, mate, um, if you bleed red and green... This is not your team. So um, I will be picking up every mistake he makes tonight and making sure that he knows it. She's tonight. His daughter is a lovely kid, great little player, and um, I will make sure I'll be rubbing it right into him tonight. Both teams look really evenly matched at the moment as Milky's had to go and chase the ball because we're short on ball boys tonight. Anyway... University usually have the strength in the line out. Not clean, but it came out the right way for Cougars. And their backs are lined, ready for the inside hit up. Nice inside ball, but Jeezy's been taken high. There's been a head clash there, and one of the university player, it looks like Mott may have taken a bit of a hit there and has gone high. There's going to be a, a bit of a look there, I'd say, from the sideline. And it may be brought back, but in this way, Cougars with a bit of pace and a bit out wide. Geez, I tell you what, he's been drawn in. And number 18 for uh, University has absolutely, looks like, a, looks like a war hope out there, has absolutely cleaned him up. Nice little pick from Cougars there. They're just pushing up, just looking for a gap on the fringes. There goes Po Ching, and he's hard to take down. He's got good leg drive, but... 
Yep, so they're calling it. So the referee's seen something there and it looks like there's been a head head knock. There's been a word from the sideline here and um, so they're going to have a look at something. The referee's called a blood fit in the number 13. He was the one who had the head clash with Mott as he came flying back on, in, in, on the inside. Wasn't a lot in it. It was just it was a hard-paced clash and um, neither had a lot of time to adjust their body. So I, I like the way the referee's done that. He's just he's noticed that there was not much they could have done. There is a lot of a lot of um, emphasis on protecting the head. Um, both players took a hit to the head, so it sort of worked out even for both of them there. So it was a good call. Cougars who have struggled for numbers recently look like they've really bulked up the side coming into the final. So it is a real chance to make a statement before we get into the finals because they are a very consistent side and have been consistent all year. And he has a well held up scrum. But no, now he's got a little flick on too. Oh, Cougars have gone quick down the sideline. It's gone out, but I think he's been taken in the corner. Yeah, nice little play out to the to the right of the scrum there. And we saw Trey Crowley. He got a bit of speed up and he picked up um, the number 14 for Cougars and he just got pipped in the corner. Great little defence and cover play. Yeah, little settle to Ribo. Ribo's got it out quick and then... Oh, good pressure by Cougars again, but they've knocked it back. But Uni are all over now. There could be a penalty coming here because the number seven... Oh, there you go. Okay, I, I... And then they've been marched. Cougars have been marched for uh, ill-discipline, kicking the ball away. I thought Uni were going to get penalised there as a number seven for Uni. Uh, Ryan Oakley sort of had his knees and then got up again, but um, the referee was right on top of that. So a bit of ill-discipline is not what Cougars needed tonight. This game is going to be too evenly matched. It's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out without a Robbie Butcher at 5'8", pulling all the strings. The man can read play like read a play like Shakespeare. Oh, Oakley and Messi, but he got it back. And delay. Lay to Warhope. Warhope, he just goes. He just loves to tuck it under and belt people. And he, and which is what he does. Cougar's slow getting out of the getting out of the ruck there, but it's ready to go again. Yeah, the outside centre for uh, University there. We've got uh, Rugu. He's just a nice little hit up. But then Lay saw, saw a gap behind in the box. He's just a nice little grubber, put it, putting a little bit of pressure on possession. Jeez, and Kug is just a, a bit of settler, which didn't go out. That's gonna, that's, that could cost him here. If these guys have got speed. One thing University are going to bring to the table tonight is a back three with a bit of pace. So the uh, number 14... Number 14 um, for Kaz. I haven't got a name for that yet, but I will bring that back to you later when I do get some names for that. Oh, he's up quick. University are right up quick. And, and yeah, he's, he's got him for a high tackle there. The University player was up really fast and probably didn't adjust his height as he got to the contact. Probably didn't even think he was going to get there that quick himself. Yeah, I didn't see a lot in there. It looked like I come across the chest a bit, but then the referee again, I think it was, you know, he was right on it, so I won't question that because it was a, you know, it's a fair call. Right, so Cougars have got the uh, throw about 11 metres out. For Cougars, it's, everything has to be calculated for them tonight. They're playing against a really structured team that's been, a, been really structured and well formatted all year. Yeah, they've won the line out. They've got it. It's not clean, though, but there's a, 
A little job has been done by the halfback, but he's gone straight into support, which is what he needed to do. I think you have Milky for a pick and drive there. Josh Phillips, he's, oh, he's been held up, but it's been taken right off him. Okay, yep, so Uni again penalised for, take, for taking the player high. Phillips ran in, he, he received a bit of a height, bit here, there we go. So it was taken high off the side of the ruck, Phillips, as he came around. So the first hand was around the neck, the next one was on the ball. So it was a good call by the referee, well seen. This young referee, this I, I believe, I think, is his fourth A-grade game for the year, and he is um, a, a good up-and-coming ref. And uh, you know, it, it's been good to see that uh, the NTRU and the Referees Association have been bringing these young blokes in. There seems to be a plethora of uh, young referees coming through. But another messy line out by Cougars and the, the wrecking ball, the man who loves running it more than anyone, the number eight for uh, university. He's, uh, I reckon last week he, he would have run about 15 k's just from hit-ups. Warhope off the boot, not a noted kicker, but he's put a straight down Crowley's throat. Crowley down the side, but... Yeah, so there's been... Oh, it's out on the fall. There was space there for, for the 15 for... Uh, Rondos for um, University, plenty of space. He just had the time to kick nicely, but it's just hit the side of the boot. And Cougars are good at applying some pressure at the moment. It's just showing the importance of not having uh, Robbie Butcher about who has played almost every game. I think he uh, missed half a game against South when I beat him convincingly. Sorry, con convincingly. <laughs> oh, another messy line out, but off the boot of the number eight, who's come in nice and quick. Geez, it, look, it looked a bit high, but he's taken him cleanly. The number 11 saw him coming. Scott Murray, I mean, he got out of that well. Yeah, and the defence, again, this university defence, they know that they've got to get up on these guys quick because... Cougars got everything to play for here tonight. Oh, nicely hit up by the fringe. Good leg drive. Poaching. Oh, again, taken high. Not a man you want to go high on. You will come off second best. Cougars wide. At the outside centre, who's uh, Rugu. But it's been lost in the tackle. University have come out of it. And Lay. Lay taking on a bit of kicking duties tonight in the absence of Butcher. Just trying to push him back deep. Oh, good pressure by the by University and Dave Taylor. The university veteran. He might be the biggest man around, but geez, he's quick. Oh, I tell you, University are all over these guys in the breakdowns the moment. They've just got to get hands tight. Just just lock that ball up. Back in the 22, they've chosen to run it back in, in attack. And again, pushing right back for field, field position. The temperature tonight, about 26 degrees, which isn't hot for Darwin Stand. It's actually a really cool night for what we're used to, uh, with the uh, tropical low pushing back to Western Australia. With a lot of rain in the last few days. So uh, the field is very damp. So the teams uh, probably don't want to run it too much in their own halves because it, it might look firm, but it is very, very wet out there. Ball pass to uh, Po Ching, just uh, pretending he's going to kick. Um, I wouldn't imagine uh, Lance could kick too much. And Crowley, he's just got that bit too sweetly and out on the full from the 20 from the goal line dropout, which I think should result the result in a five metre scrum. Maybe Lance should have kicked it. He wouldn't have kicked it that much, that far.
may have been a result of, I guess, a miscalculation, obviously, but also a miscommunication. He sort of didn't look like he um, had an overall plan. I think it was a little bit rushed. Not that I've got any criticisms of Cougars, but I just feel like maybe they're just missing a cog in the back line there. Um, they've got a couple of really handy players, but they're just probably missing a cog, that, that butcher-esque sort of player who um, can pull a few strings and to calm the boys down and sort of be thinking one or two moves ahead. I mean, there aren't many teams who have got that in at this year, but um, a special player like Butcher. And, Yeah, that's out quick and lay just from the back of the scrum. Out there, down. Uni are quick outside this part and he's over. Uni are always dangerous five metres out. They've got speed and they've got strength and the 13 saw the line. There was no chance anyone was going to stop him when he was that far out. Yeah, nice little play you can see in the back of the scrum. Wishart, he just knew exactly where he was going to go with that. And we'll just have a look at the replay. But you can see it popped out really quick for Lay, but he saw Wishart and he just knew that he had he had the 18 who was not quite as quick, I guess. And because he went high, it was really hard to hold him up. There aren't many play, players of that speed and that quality you're going to be able to um, stop if they're going to go that quick. So he's done. He saw the line. He knew he only had to get him off balance and he's over. Stalanos, he's been uh, he's been kicking right this year um, from the field, but Butch has been doing the kicking duty, so I'll be interested to see what he picks up tonight. Jeez, he hasn't kicked it real well. It's gone straight across the uh, front of goal. But I guess if you haven't kicked much off the tee this year, then it's going to be it's going to take a while to get your eye in. But a quality player with a bit of speed who's, who's done really well this year. I know the South boys were really surprised when they played him in the first round and he absolutely stung a few of the boys' speed. So as I said, this is the last round of the uh, regular season. Next week is Masters weekend, so there won't be any um, competition games. And in two weeks' time, we get straight into the finals. And at this stage, you've got South and Union in the major semi-final and Cougars and Dragons in the minor semi-final. And that looks pretty much set now. Oh, I tell you, a big mistake. The try scorer, Wistran, he's just... I thought he'd knocked that on, but the referee's called it back, and I thought Wistran, the try scorer, had um, absolutely butchered that there for a second, but obviously... Um, Obviously, the referee saw different, and I'm not going to question him. Yeah, Phillips to two jumper, but well spoiled by Oakley. Got out the lay and laid, laid to the 5'8 to Warhope again on the boot. There must be some during the week they've worked on a bit of uh, alternative moves, and Warhope is going great ground, just so great ground out in front of the um, Ladies' Day celebrations for Cougars. And if you look very carefully, I'd say my uh, colleague Rocky will be enjoying himself over there. He's making the excuse he's got to help his uh, wife look after the newborn, but I'm pretty sure he would have dumped her on her and just hit the bar. Oakley again, nice clean lay to Warhope. Now Warhope, this close to the line, he's just going to hammer him, but he's been called back. Closing of the gap in the line-out by the looks of it. Still trying to make a decision here of what's going on, where they're going to go for goal on it. Oh, sorry, he's got the shoulder charge from Cougars, I believe. Wow. OK, and they're going for three. With, without, the, uh, without Butcher here, who's been the kicker all year, that's a uh, big call. I would have thought um, you know, a scrum with the outside backs they've got and a bit of pace, um, they'd be uh, really dangerous that close to the line.
Stellanos with time. That's better off the boot. I tell you what, now, after seeing that one, I can see why they, they chose to kick. That first one might have been just kicking a few nerves and knocking a bit of rust out, but that one was well off, came off the boot really, really well. Um, so, yeah, good call. Just, just picking points as they go, just making sure they keep ticking the uh, scoreboard over whenever they get up that end, which where two teams are so evenly matched at the moment, that's a, a really good option. And deep, deep back to the number six, who uh, Fruin, who knocked it back and has set it up nicely. Oh, and the number eight runs run sideways there, and the, has been hit really firmly by the number 18 for Cougars. And there goes Mott. He's been patched up a bit, but he's been taken high as well, but gone down. Now the forwards aren't quite there, but there's been a penalty brought back. Now there's a bit of chat at the referee here, but it looks like he's, it's from the uh, high hit that was in the previous um, more. And this, this is something that um, the last few minutes has been pretty ordinary from Cougars. It's just putting some good pressure on, moving in the line of defence really fast, but then just something a little bit silly has brought him back again. You know, the first five to, five to eight minutes of the game, Cougars have really put some pressure on that line, but didn't come away with anything. And you can sort of see the, how much, how important it is to um, take something away whenever you're inside the 22 of the opposition. Yeah, nice cleanly won by University in Warhope. And Baum, he loves to tuck it under. He, geez, he's hard to take down. He's, got, he's carrying two blokes with him. He's hit the third defender, then dropped. Now, Lay's seen a gap, and he's just gone himself. And again, his leg drive is strong, too. You just keep turning him around. Now, you can see Oakley just sort of sneaking there as a halfback roll. Oh, and off the boot to the fullback for Uni. He's got, he's seen the gap. He's picked it. Oh, well, and Trey Crowley. Trey Crowley picked up a really hard ball. It's just juggled and it's just gone out there. But, you know, it was all he could do. Last line of defence. Everything, everything was going in his way then. Stalinos, he just... The ball was just bouncing just nicely for him. And with someone who's got that sort, of, that sort of wheels, I mean, Taylor was there with him and both of them are quick. Yeah, Oakley... Cougars not choosing to chase the ball up in the air and ready for the drive, which is signature uni. They just, they've got that structure. Oh, from the back of the loop, back of the mall, he's over. Tell you what, that is strong running and the structure of university again on show. It's what they've done all year. They're probably one of the most, if not the most structured side in the competition. And they know if they play well-structured well rugby, they're going to get on top of most teams. And you can just sort of see the uh, forwards for um, Kaz being sucked in, dropping the head. And he, he knew that he had some room. And again, with that much size, leg drive and uh, that close to the line, there aren't, isn't really anybody who's going to stop him. The game plan for Uni just seems to be coming off at the moment. Stavros, Stalinos, sorry, is uh, pretty much in the position he uh, got it through last time. He's casual, but geez, he kicked it well. Off the boot nicely again. I tell you what, he's just pushed it wide, but gee, he came off nicely. I would have nearly backed him in there after the last kick, but it was a hard one. Cougars have been playing off the back foot for probably the last 10 to 15 minutes now, and when you are being pushed back a bit, it is hard to sort of re-engage what your plan was before the game, so... This is where Josh Phillips or 
um, someone else need, or your halfback and 5'8 need to start talking to the forwards and start getting those players to bring those unit players down a little bit quicker. Nice high kick, but there's not a lot of pressure on him out to lay again. And the forwards are lined up nicely. And the number eight for Uni, again, look, they're just, they're just not hitting the legs. He's just getting a little bit extra to help push him back. Yeah, nice. Uh, geez, that's messy. But Kaz, get the ball back from what was an absolute dog's breakfast of a ruck. Uni setting a nice flat line, not pushing too, not too much enthusiasm push line. But, geez, he's pushed right back. No advantage there for Cougars. It's been ripped. Lance poaching. I tell you what, you wouldn't be doing that in a South Jersey, Lance. That must be that Cougars jersey rubbing off on you there, mate. I know his daughter doesn't play like that, and she's only six. But a little settler, I tell you what, down to the wrecking ball. One. Oh, he's been held on nicely. He got past one, but the number six for Cougars, um, Whitlam, he didn't let him go, and he brought him down nicely. But Warhope always makes solid ground. Geez, they've got some big boppers, these guys, but going the ball on them is just not going to work. And Mott, Mott just pushing forward again. Just, mate, this is where uni just do their damage. They've just got those big fellas. Oh, Ed. young Davy Taylor. Yeah, they've called him for a forward pass, but this is... This is uni every week. They've got these big boppers who just hit just outside the fringe, make that ground, and this is and the back rowers need to push across, but um geez, they're hard to stop. It's a simple plan, but it works. Now, not taking away from Cougars, they're a perennial finals contender year in, year out. Been in a couple of good grand finals recently. Oh, the referee's got them for boring into the side. Nice short arm. Now, no one's gone back to 10, so they're going to get... He's been... They're, no one's back to 10, so they didn't let him get anywhere near it, so they're going to get another penalty here. Oh, and it's, and it's knocked on in the ruck. Get Brack for not going back 10. Lay's just having a word saying, mate, there should be a yellow there, but I don't think so. You've got to give him, give him a bit of a warning, but anybody's going to jump in front of you if there's no one back 10. Uni has signalled to go for goal in not the easiest position. The way that they've got a handle on this game at the moment, I would have, um, I'd be going for the line and just keep putting this pressure on. They've got too many big boppers they can run off the side to bust over the line, so. Anyway, again, that's why I'm up here and not down there. Those who know about rugby gen generally keep playing it. Stalinos been balked by the crowd, but didn't phase him one little bit. Straight through the posts. And the score now goes to 16 points to nil. Physically and ability-wise, the teams are really, really even. It's just uni just playing on the back of those big running forwards. Kazarina is finding it really hard to recover just from when they're getting pushed back over the advantage line. And yeah, nice high kick just on the other side of 10 there. And yeah, Phillips right on really fast. Phillips and Hoenigan putting a lot of pressure on the uh, number five, Linton. And Linton still strapped up from the head knock earlier. But Uni again, they got the forwards lined up, but he went nowhere. That was just rock solid. He's, the referee looks like he's got his arm out, possibly for an offside there, because they were up so quick. 
But Uni given the advantage and on the fringes again now. Warhope Bond. Oh, he's nearly got through two. Well taken by Marsh and he's on to David Taylor. And they now university of all over this. There's players everywhere. Taylor's been knocked off the ball, but is he going to score anyway? No. Looks like he was almost nudged off the ball on the run. He, the referee looking to the side. Gee, they were quick. Uni just turned them around and put on the skates and went. Taylor's dart was dangerous and he was only inches away from scoring. Crowley with the boot. He's, at, he's just gone deep. Stalinos and Taylor there, but Stalinos. He's gone past one. He's stepped inside. There's two he's missed. He's been taken by the third, but he's still gained good ground. He's probably take, given up 30 metres there. Oh, the ball was free, and Kaz nearly got it back. Christian Wills nicely lit up there. Kaz committing a few blokes with a 5-8. He's stepped right through. He's seen one. He's seen two. He's gone out to the number 14. He scored. Sanderson was just in the right position at the right time. Russell's held the ball up in the where he needed to go. Good covering position. He's held it up and then put Sanderson straight through. As we have a look at the replay, there's a few blokes who committed there, but no one pushed across behind. Kaz covered as best they could, but you can sort of you can see the number 11. He he was caught stranded. That was Scott Murray. He pushed up and uh, opened up the gap. Russell saw it. Sanderson took advantage and boom, another one. Before, besides the first eight minutes, it's been all uni. You see Phillips is just coming to have a chat to the referee now. He's just having a word. There must be something there that he didn't like. And for him, for someone, for a captain to walk from the goal line to the referee in a kicking position, that's, that's a huge sign of frustration. Not much uni, uh, excuse me, not much. Oh, I tell you what, that was awful. He might have lost a bit of focus there with uh, with Josh Phillips having a chat to the referee, and that might have been in the back of his mind a bit, but he did not have his focus on the ball. Looks like he lifted his head really early. But yeah, for the captain to come all the way over and talk to the referee, there's a huge amount of frustration in the Cougars camp at the moment. They just cannot stop this juggernaut. It just keeps piling through. Once uni get the momentum, they're just impossible to stop at the moment. We're seeing the Kazarina forwards push in, getting nice hits, but then there's no one on the outside of them opening up the gaps. Warhope, here comes, here he goes again. One, two. He's been strangled hold by the number three. He's knocked over three. It was the fourth player to get him down. Sure if, if anybody's got some uh, demolition work, he's the man you want. He'll knock a few houses down for you. He might just run straight through them. Russell. Russell's picked up the outside centre. Wistran, and Wistran has been taken down nicely, but not without gaining a good bit of ground. Oakley and the forwards are lining up. And he's got him for a forward pass. They're just a little bit too flat. Time for Casarina to take advantage here. They need to get some points. 21 nil at half time is going to hurt. A 21 7 or 21 10 is nowhere near as, um, as hard to see. Uni are ringing a few of the changes in now. Here we go with uh, Big Brenton. 
the 150 kilo phenomenon who debuted last week which I found out during the week, ex-Newcastle Knights under-20s player. So he's got a bit of ability, the big fella. Nicknamed the Sexy Beast because he's got five kids. Now, I tell you what, he must be fit. Chasing five kids around, looking after Mrs. M playing rugby, mate, that's a guy who's got to be focused. And with six minutes to go, there's plenty of room for him to do some damage here. Kazarina do have a bit of a bench over there, but I would doubt they have the uh, forward power, the manpower that Uni have just put on. So this could uh, make a little bit of a difference just to sort of punch another hole through these guys. Yeah, Marsh from the back of the scrum. Number eight to Marsh. Master Crowley. Now Crowley, not a big man. He's been held up nicely, but found his found his knees and found the ground. Good work. Now this is where Kaz have got to be patient. They've got to not let Uni get their hands on the ball. And patience is the key because Uni are up quick. They've gone high. And if you're going to run high against these big boys, you're going to come off second best, which they did. And lay with the boot. He's put it up high, giving his defenders plenty of time to get there. And the referee has called him back. The arm was out. And off the turnover, he's got him for offside. Again, another costly mistake. There's a lot of frustration out there now, um, and I think half time for Casarina can't come soon enough for everyone because they need to just calm down and take stock of what's happening. They're not out of this. Not a huge kick, but right on halfway. Four and a half minutes to go, and it is all university. Again, this is a Ryan Oakley gimme, this. There's no circuit where this is going. Ribo calling it, and there you go. Nice little tap down to Lay. Lay out to Russell. Russell, a lot of pressure on, but he's all found Warhope. And Warhope, nice little pop on the outside. And again, they've gone a little bit high, and Cougars could not quite turn that around, but geez, a good effort. The number 12 for Cougars... Uh, Inaru, he actually did a really good effort there, but couldn't quite pull it off. Boom, Warhope again, one, two, he's opened up a hole. He's found the number eight, who's just been pulled down nicely by Marsh. Marsh right on top of him there. There's just big boppers everywhere for you. They're just so hard to stop on the run. Russell had to Wistrand now. Phillips bounced off Wistrand. Wistrand just saw in the last minute to go to the left and... Milky had him cleaned up otherwise. And Big Brenton. Oh, geez, I tell you what. Marsh is all over in defence at the moment. Geez, he's going well. And Lay under pressure. Just held onto it a little bit too long, and the uh, hit has forced the ball out. The number eight for Casarina, which I haven't got a name for at the moment, he's um, been doing a great job as well. Where other guys are being bumped off, it just seems to be a couple of those littler blokes are just holding on and slowing down the play. It's just a last ditch effort that's just pulling University in the moment. That score could have been a whole lot worse had those blokes not just latched on like they did. Geez, while you got a couple of war hopes and uh, and Hurthy running out there, geez, he's a big boy too. Big Hurley. That's your number 17 with the headband on there. Yeah, Phillips, clean one. They've just got to get some position. 
It's gone on the... It's a fair kick. Oh, he's, they've done well there, Cougars. Yeah, nice little settler, but that is a really good kick. Probably 11 out from halfway, 11 and a half out from halfway. Just keep, just got to keep Uni away from the line. It's going to be a massive effort from uh, Casarina now to try and try and bring some points back. Oh, and Oakley. Nice little tap down for Warhope taking it, nearly knocking it on, but get it. Oh, then little Davey's been taken high, but. And knocks it on in the hit. Jeez. It was just around the chest, just around the shoulder, just below the shoulders. I mean, pretty hard to go low on a bloke like that. I don't know. What are you, Davey? About 5 1? No, just jokes. He's probably about 5 1 and a half. But, um, yeah, he was quick from that ruck. You had to shut him down because he, another step inside and he was away. So a player like this has to have Trey Crowley all over it. He's got to be involved here somewhere if they're going to try and sneak any points out of this. I think they'd just be happy to get away with uh, not getting score against at the moment. Oh, Uni, big push in the scrum. Oh, and he's got he's got the university front row for uh, put, trying to pop Casarina. They were dominant. They were pushing forward, but he's uh, got them for boring in on the angle, trying to pop them out. Short arm tap. By Marsh. Oh, and the, the big outside centre. He's bump one. And Rugu just knocked it on. There was someone attacking the ball while he ran it up, and he's just been hit around the breadbasket, and there's just nothing Casarini can do to draw this back at the moment. Jeez, that'd be sucking in hard for half time. I don't know what they're going to get out of it, but they're going to have to rethink their whole plan at the moment. because it just looks like Uni are going through the motions. Warhope sitting back at 5-8 uh, there. Not that uh, Kazarina haven't got any big boppers in the backs too. Geez, they've got a big, they've got a big back line as well. It's just not letting these Uni guys get the roll on. Half-time siren is gone, so I'd say both teams ready for this to end. Yeah, lay from the back. He's hit Warhope. Warhope has just gone the boot, pushing him back, but he's got Sanderson up quick and Crowley. He, did, he didn't want to use the line, but he's got University all over him. Not the greatest kick, but there goes Lay with a bit of pace, and he's picked up the big fella who's bumped one. Been taken down. And there's Christian. Christian again. He's bumped one, two, and he's moving forward. They're going for points. It's going to be. They're going to take away points in this half. There's big Brenton. Brenton. He's just held him up nicely for his forwards to recoup. And now the forwards are lining up. Ryan Oakley held the ball up nicely just to give an option. And Lay is gone. Boom. One, two. Here they go again. These big fellas, once they see the line, they're determined. He's over, and there was nothing going to stop him from there. Once they knew that they were that close, they got a sniff. Like a shark after blood, and they've just gone, thanks very much. We'll go into half time, and geez, I tell you what, they've just about broke Cougars back here. Look at him bounce. He just, he got hit around the legs. He bounced over Phillips, and then there was just too many big blokes ready for the pick at that, that early. Sorry, that close to the line. I mean, you need two or three blokes to knock these fellas over, and by doing that, you're sucking in the other defenders, just leaving gaps. We talk about how good Souths are this year and how they're possibly a step above other sides. But with the right game plan, gee, it's going to be hard to stop Uni when they get to the grand final or the major semi-final. I mean, you've got these big boppers that are taking three or four blokes to bring them down, drawing the defenders in. Then they've got these speedy backs. 
they've just got to spread it after drawing the defenders in and they're going to score a lot a lot to like about uni and they're doing a job on Casarina tonight i did not expect this off the post Stalinos, he just, he's been hitting them pretty well, but again, it's just that left-hand side, he, he's got a bit of confidence that he hit the post, and as lightning strikes and half-time hits, Kazarina cannot wait to get into the sheds. They have absolutely been bossed around this half. They've got to come out with some authority in the next half, otherwise this is going to be an absolute bloodbath. We'll take a break, and we'll be back on the other side.
Welcome back to Land Rover Rugby Park here in Darwin. You are live on on in a, in, excuse me. You are live on the Northern Territory Rugby Union Facebook Rugby Explorer app. And if you're watching on Sunday, it's NITV. The first half was all University. Just they had the big boppers running over the top of Cougars and Cougars just scrambling and scrambling. The good thing out of that, though, is the, uh, and I just found out, I was just wondering how to listen to the half time, and, you know, the teams are very evenly matched, but in the centres for Cougars, they've, you wouldn't believe it, they're big, boy, they're big boys, and they don't look like it, but they're only a couple of 18-year-olds. Elijah and um, Ragu, they're only a couple of 18-year-olds making their first grade debut, so that makes a lot of, um, that makes a lot of sense, to, I guess, to why there's a bit of a struggle there because they've just got some really experienced forwards running at them and um, they'll get a lot out of that first half. Hopefully that someone will pull them aside and give them a hand because um, everything went to script for uh, university. At the moment, they've just got the big boppers just rolling forward, rolling forward. And as soon as the uh, advantage comes, the uh, back line are just spreading it and they've got speed. And as Cougars start start their way out to the field, as I said when we started this, there's not a lot between the teams. It just seems that uh, Cougars probably are a little bit quiet from what I hear, and there's not a lot of um, not a lot of talk or leadership sort of directing them around the park. And this is where someone has to stand up in the second half because they cannot afford Uni to score now. And the way Uni are going. Um, they're going to be really, really hard to stop, and they're going into the finals with the wind at their backs. Good luck to anybody who gets them too. South uh, will be taking plenty of note of this, and they're going to be working out a game plan because it's going to be really, really hard to stop. University on your right, and Cougars are on your left for anybody who's just uh, started. And um, Matthew Travers, someone's just asked where he is. Um, I don't know, he might be in cotton wool. He's been one of my favourite players this season, so I'm not sure what's happening. I'll have to find out later. But Uni, a nice little cook kick deep, putting pressure on the winger for Cougars. But Stavanos is... Uh, who's been a little bit dangerous in the first half? He's put an awkward kick in right near the line, which is making it really hard to get that ball away. And with the pressure, that hasn't gone out. Putting good pressure, and now he's... Big Shawnee White, he's just gone like, don't even think about taking me, but he's been, there you go. But they didn't give up, they got him. Usually he's knocking one or two off, but they got him. A nice quick ball there. Still can't stop him from getting to the advantage line. They've just got to go low, chop him down. Forwards lining up, oh. Tell you what, University have just put a bit of pressure on themselves there. The number one just, spilled it clean. Why hasn't been called for knock on? I don't know. But anyway. They got the ball now, Lay. Again, they're lining up. That looks like Mott. And as they do, they always just have all these settlers till they get in the position where they want to strike. 
They're like sharks circling pilchards. They just get all the position they want. They line them up, line them up, until they want to absolutely angle in and get the points. Russell, he's gone the dummy. He's missed one, missed two. He's gone through the gap. He's got, he's got air, but there's pressure on him. He's getting the call, but he's been taken down nicely by, by the halfback for Casarina and holding on to the ball. He had no support. It was a little bit too quick. The forwards just couldn't get there, and there was defenders all over him. It was the five and six for Casarina that fell off the tackle. And then the halfback, and uh, sorry, the number eight for Casarina all over it. But yeah, I mean, just a, another opportunity, something that they cannot afford. Phillips looking for clean ball. It's going to the four. Oh, it's been missed, missed by them all, then messed up by Uni. That's knocked on by Uni, but they're up nice and quick. With Strand, put a lot of pressure on the 5'8". Thanos has had plenty of ball all night. He's just looking for a gap and then looking for room for the boot. They just want to play it up one end and they want to use their speed to lock them in, which they're about to do. Jeez, that... Oh, big Shawnee, one, two. But taken down nicely by the debutante. Rugu, he's, he's got plenty of size too, so he wasn't going to let him get past. Oh, big hit. Nicely hit, but he still got it away. Was that Lance Poaching? I tell you what, mate, I'm surprised you could make any hits in the jumper like that, Lance. Thought you'd gone soft. But, oh, then Cougars, there's a lot of enthusiasm here. I like it. But they just got to get them down. Again, it's all high. If it's not the first bloke going low, then the second bloke's got to go. But someone's got to stop this leg drive because they're just too big. And again, one, two. The number eight comes in nicely. And the referees call it back. Yeah, offside. I mean, it's been the bane of Casarina for most of the night. They're, they know they've got to move up quick and they know they can't get these blokes any room because once they get some room, they're just nearly impossible to stop, particularly getting past the advantage line. But just the, just the enthusiasm is probably overtaking them there. And again, you've got to have someone pulling that line of defence and saying, this is where we've got to be and this is how flat we've got to be and then going up together. I sort of feel like there's too many blokes doing the first hit and then the backing up, back up hits are coming afterwards, not together. This is make or break now though for, uh, for Cougars. They cannot afford to to lose points now. They lose points now and I reckon this is gonna this is gonna be a slog. I mean not that it hasn't been a slog already, but it's gonna it's gonna be near impossible for them to come back after this. University straight to Ribo. They got the push but Kaz of great work by Kaz holding up near the line. But Tonga at the back again, number eight, he's just had a sniff. He doesn't need a lot of room. He's bouncing, spinning, bouncing. He's got geez, he's close. They're diving over each other here at the forwards. But again, they're lining up. Jeez, they've got to get it wide now. The backs are ready. They're going to skin them if they get it wide. Looks like Wistrand there and Russell at the back. And then Mott's gone the run again. He's got his close. He's getting a drive from Russell. He's been held up. He's over the line, but he's held up there. What's the call? It's a try. I didn't quite see who put it down. It looks like it was uh, the number four. The number four for uh, uni, um, Ollie Linton, he's the one who did the hit. He's the one who got over the line. Good drive by the 5'8". You can see that, he, that the hits come just there. He's eyed off the ball at the back, and then you watch the... He's bounced one, and they just, again, everybody's gone high. He's got the leg drive. He's been bounced through. The referee's got good, clear eyes on the ball. Geez, that's going to hurt.
Allen. That's right in front. He's been it's been good off the boot. He's um, mixed results tonight, but he hasn't. Um, besides two ordinary kicks, the uh, rest have come off really nicely. Yep. Nice and casual, off the boot nicely, boom. Takes a score to 33 to nil, and that's a big hill for Casarina. I do um, also have to make a correction from last week. Last week I was, um, today I was good enough, good enough to play the over 35s and have a run with uh, the great Taniella Tuiaki, one of the world's great NRL wingers. And I did say last week combined we had over 50 uh, NRL games together. I do have to make a correction because um, people have said how many have I played and you know all that sort of stuff. The correction is combined it's 168 together so hopefully I've cleared it up for anybody who questioned me last week. Casarina, a little bouncy kick but uh, Uni have just cleaned that up nicely and got good ground again. This is this is just the structured play we expect. I thought without Butcher, they were going to be a bit messy. Um, but it goes to show um, they got more strings to their bow than just the one man, which we already knew anyway. But just having those forwards, having the options to uh, settle the ball down a bit. Yeah, big throw, well won by Cougars. Here we go to the centres now, and oh, a bit of inexperience there. Elijah, he uh, had the ball nicely. I think it was two mines. The first one was to hit it up, and the second one he got the call, and it was late. And um, he copped a uh, little bit of a knock there too, which has knocked the wind out of him. But it's uh, bad luck for the young fellow because... We all have these sort of nights. Your debut never, will not always go smoothly. Oh, I can see on the feed that someone's brought up that uh, did anybody of note score a try in the uh, over 35s game against uh, Palmerston? And uh, to that person, I will say, yes, there was a sensational try scored in, on full time by uh, yours truly. Um, I think I, yeah, I, I stepped about three or four people. I ran over the number eight and the prop, um, dummied the fullback, took on the outside centre and drove over for a great try to uh, win the game. Now, not that I was the only one who kept score, but I can tell you now, if anybody questions it, we won because of that try. So, well done, South. I had to go hiding from the first grade coach after that. I was worried he'd call me up. On lay. Oh, a big drive in the front row for Cougars. Russell called the inside ball, but it was a, it was a decoy because it's gone out to Warhope, who, geez, he got, they're not going to stop him. And straight, oh, there you go. The decoy run from the 5-8. It looked like he was going to cut back inside. Fooled everyone, hit Warhope. On the fly, it was it was like a freight train running through there. He wasn't going to be stopped on a, on a whim. And then he's picked up Sanderson, who just walked it over. As we can see in the replay, look, he can they set him up, but he was flying through. They weren't going to stop him from where he was. Boom! And he just I mean the number 14 only had to walk it over. He could have tripped over his laces and scored that. Trey Crowley, he just, there was nothing he could have done. I mean, geez, Warhope's got some uh, power. I won't say size because I don't want uh, Shawnee to come and question me that, but geez, he's got some power when he drives through there. And Trey Crowley, he needed a second hand, second help, set of hands to try and help knock that bloke over. We're only 10 minutes into the uh, second half and we're going to hit the... Uh, we're in 38 points now, so I'm not sure where Kaz can go from here.
they have been struggling for numbers, so you've got to give them that. It has been a very disrupted season for them, probably more so them than anyone. But that's come off nicely again. He's just pushed it wide. He hasn't really had any, any easy shots bar the uh, one prior to this. So, um, but he's, he's seen them nicely off the boot. Not that it matters when you're this far ahead. Um, for and against is settled. The, the ladder's settled. It's just a matter now of hoping that no one gets injuries and they can go into the finals with the strongest team possible. Kaz have had no ball. It hasn't gone 10. <laughs> Has not gone 10 and more frustration for the blue and white. Yeah, as I was saying, I mean, they, they have struggled probably since Christmas, Kaz, to sort of really um, get their full strength team on the paddock. Um, in saying that, though, they had a great win against the undefeated University Reserve grade today. University were undefeated all year and then Kazarina I, um, put on about uh, 30 points on them today in the reserve grade. So that was um, a huge win and a massive upset. That still keeps Kazarina I think in third place in reserve grade and University on top of the table. So they'll go in as minor premiers into the finals. So the first week of finals, you'll see South's minor premiers in A grade against Uni, and in B grade, you're then going to have uh, Uni minor premiers against South. And in the women's, you're going to have South's top of the table minor premiers. So it's against uh, Dragons and Uni, Uni their third. Short arm penalty for the scrum again, but did not find touch off the tap. Murray with the mullet, he's just sent it up, but Stavanos, he's been taken high, that didn't look good. Rugu, the uh, number 13 debutant. He came in and again, you're talking about a, a little fella. He got bumped in the first hit as he was going to ground and Rugu Sort of, at, sort of came in as the guy was, as Davinos was going to ground, and his arm had hit him high. I think we're going to possibly see a yellow here. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, and I don't mind that. Um, I mean, in a contact game like this, when players are going down, geez, it's hard to adjust, and there's not a lot you can do. So. I actually don't mind them doing that, and they go the line. And again, the pressure back on Cougars. I, I did not expect this. Wheels ready for the throw. Yeah, Ryan Oakley, oh, he juggles it, but he maintains the ball and a nice little drive quick. There's going to be a penalty here, surely. They've taken down the ruck, but... Sorry, the mall, sorry. Which the arm does go out, and then it was spilled, so they're going to come back for the penalty. Not a lot Casarini could have done there. They had to hold their feet. Once you get a ruck... Sorry, once you get a mall and it starts moving, done properly, they're near impossible to stop. Again, going to the line, going to what they know best. Solid Ryan Oakley jump into the mall and Big Tonga is going to come off the back of this, I'd say. He doesn't like seeing the backs get tries, I'm sure. The number eight for uni, if there's any sniff of a line and he can get it, he's not going to give it to the backs. And me being a forward, why should he? Forwards do all the work. Yep, Oakley again, bringing it down. Bit high there, the University. I don't know whether he's been locked in by Kazarina and Kaz have locked the ball up. It looks like someone has made a mess of it, but he's peeled off the back. And again, 
With pressure on their uni, you found a way. Kazarina fought, they held it up nicely, and they found a way to find the line. As we see the replay, looks like Oakley was held up and someone had got in there and made a mess of it and they'd done a really, really good job. But then at the back there, yeah, there you go, Ollie. Ollie Linton, he just saw it, he just found the ball in his hands, had a roll, no one in front of him. And you just got to sigh if you're Casarina. Because when the wind's at your back and you've got momentum, momentum is a very, very hard beast to stop. Shoulders down, hands on hips. Ooh, low kick, low kick, push wide. So Robbie Butcher will be back next week. He, I uh, think he's in isolation until tomorrow. Tomorrow will be his last day. Um, I think all these teams are looking forward to a bit of a, a week off, a bit of a recover. I think particularly Casarina, who will hopefully have a few people back from COVID, from injuries and whatever else has been uh, stalling them at the moment. But they need what they can to help them out. Yes, here we go. And the big number four... Ollie Linton, he's just gone, boom, I'll take you on. And he got knocked flat, but there's a few people got ended up on their back there. Kaz taking him down nicely. Oh, and they've, they've spilled it. They've got to take advantage now. Nice little pick up and Kaz are all over this, locking the ball up. And this is where they've got us now to secure it. As things go from bad. Oh no, they've got the penalty. The high hit. I thought I, I was looking at the uh, referee at the time and I actually didn't see it because I was anticipating the next move and he knocked it on and it looks like it was juggled out because of the uh, high hit. Looked like it came kind of back. But anyway, here they go again. You can sort of see. Nice, big, strong run right over the event. Something we haven't seen much of all night. The arm looks like it went out again. But this is where Kaz had to settle. It's just not a settled play. The halfback, Russell, he's gone really well. Dart back inside, trying to put Uni on the back foot. Phillips just looking for options. Oh, and that's a good little dart there because University done the counter ruck and not seen him from the back. University player is all over that. He's just not making any effort to move away. He looks like he's rolled back into the ruck. And there's another little dart right on the line. They've got to be close. Geez, the Kazarina backs are screaming for it. They've gone the blind. And then Uni are up nice and quick to shut it down fast. This is the difference. Uni didn't have a lot of time. They just used the roll on the roll on where Casarina, they just, they haven't got a lot of pace to move. They're not moving the ball. Quick, quick tap off the uh, penalty. Lance Po Ching, he's hit the line. He almost got pushed out, but he's popped it back in just in time. Then the counter ruck from Uni. Phillips. Phillips, nice little pop. It's gone to Strawn and Strawn. Taken probably a meter out. There you go, Trey Crowley. He's gone the dart. He's gone the pop, but then he's, the arm's gone up again. Another offside play, and I think uh, Uni, uh, the crowd who have been here for quite a while today, are really getting involved now. Mm -hmm. I reckon they're uh, helping the referee out there. But geez, Uni are only one or two, probably one penalty away from just about getting a yellow card. Well worth Oakley going up and having a miss at this. 
You can see why Casarino weren't putting the drive on, but the way the uh, line out's been going for Uni, well worth him having a crack, making it messy. And as he does, he goes up. It is a mess. It does go Uni's way, but it's not an easy ball to get. And Lay fighting out of the lay. He picked up the ball. There was a lot of pressure on him. He was fighting himself out of the uh, try line. And the referee got a little word in the ear about the knock on. So the pressure stays on. Casarina, they need this just for morale, just to sort of get themselves back into the game a little bit so they're not always on the back foot. Just offering something for the crowd, offering something for themselves. And I reckon if they can get it out to these, these boys, the big boppers, the 12, the 13 and 14, they're going to go over, but they've got to make sure they get it out quick because they're not going to be stopped if they can get it out wide here. Oh, and University have absolutely destroyed them in the scrum. University got that hit on nicely and then had a really nice... And as soon as that ball's hit, the front row have absolutely monstered the front row from Casarina. The last thing Casarina need here is someone to go off a whim. They need a set play. They need to be really clear of what's going to happen. And again, Uni with confidence, with confidence. And they're gone. Being penalised for pushing the scrum around. When you're that dominant, you've got to be careful. But there's the tap from the scrum, the short arm. And the uh, number, six, number nine there, it's messy. The referee has said no knock on. Again, the forwards, they need to send it. They need to send it. There's a size imbalance in the back line, and this is where Casarina need to take advantage. They're lined up, ready to go. But they've switched to the blind now. As the ball hits the centre of the field, the back line have gone to the left. And the forwards are uh, just... There's too many big boppers on the fringes here, and there's just it's just a mess here for Casarina. Someone's got to take control of this area. But the ball's been seen again by the forwards, and I'll tell you what, these are... Oh. Casarina went on their own. That was always going to happen. And again, I think this, whether the halfback or fight, somebody needed to get in the ear of the forwards and just let them know that they've got to give these debutantes an opportunity out there. They're not going to beat Palmer, Palmerston, sorry. They're not going to beat University on the fringes with the size of their pack they got. And while Uni have got um, a couple of big boys like uh, Warhope in the um, back line, the rest of them are sort of aren't the biggest boppers running around. So they've got a real size advantage. And I really like to see uh, Casarina just start punching holes in the centre, not trying to take them on in the forwards because Uni are just going to eat them up. special Oakley to lay and it's gone the boot and they're just going again to try and keep the pressure on oh, good take he's throwing the dummy but he's isolated himself and there are a lot of uni players there Crowley sort of didn't really know what to do with it and he's been brushed by Tonga Tonga's brushed too but then been taken down by Rugu and then oh look the beast he's just monstered him he's run over the poor number 11, Scott Murray, he had a crack, but he went high again. And this is where they're going to just roll them up the field with their forwards and roll them up and then skin them in the backs. Lay the box, but then, oh, Crowley, just to make matters worse for the day. Good player, Crowley, but I guess when it's not your day, things can just compound. I 
think he'd be shaking his head and going, what else in the mistakes box can we pull out tonight? It's a perfect night for rugby up in the NT. Usually what we would call the hottest rugby in the world because of the tropical low. It's a beautiful 26, which once it hits 24 up here, everybody's got jumpers on. So um, besides the wet field and a bit of sweat, I would have thought that um, they would have had a few less scrums tonight because um, it's probably the best condition they've had all year. Nice quick scrum by University, and now they're going to send it wide. They're going to use their backs, and they're going to use their speed, but, geez, the winger was up quick, and... Oh, Davey, he's just taken on the big man, and they're always an opportunity, the big man, see when Dave runs it. But he's got it back nicely. He's fought... Oh, up really quick in defence. Bang, and... Another high hit there as the uh, number four, Linton. He's just taking it up. But then they go, oh, why? Why? He's the man you cannot take high. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I mean, it's a freight train that you say. He hasn't been stopped all night. And there's Big Tonga. He goes, I'll have another go too. Goes high first, goes one leg second, and then the enthusiasm's good as the technique's out of whack. And it's all one-on-one. -on -one. No arms in the tackle, going for goal. Lay signalled it. And I think in that last few minutes of play, we've just seen the uh, what's been happening all night. And I think I've, it's been a fatigue season for Casarina. I said that, yeah, they've got a solid, they've got a solid playing group there, but probably lacking a bit of um, probably lacking a bit of that extra spark or that bit of next level player or leadership that um, some of the other teams might have, um, whether that be due to COVID or work or why they're not here. But you know. Plenty of enthusiasm, I've got to give them that, but the overzealous enthusiasm has killed them all night. Stevanos, again, in front, doesn't miss. Score now going to 46 nil. Which, um, considering what the half-time score was, I think uh, Kaz have been going all right, but then that tends to happen in the heat up here. The boil, the boil can be taken off. Yeah, right down the foot of Lay, and Lay just lines it up for the tall. Sends it over the head of the wingers. And geez, he's got some distance. Tell you what. He wasn't far off the 50-22 uh, there. It's probably only about four or five metres from a 50-22. It got the, got the distance, got the run, but just ducked inside. Oh, they're going up early now for the uh, throw, but we no contesting of this one now for uh, uni. Just seems like they've got all the extra time in the world at the moment, University, and Kaz feel like they're just running on seconds. They're just getting cramped for time and room. Yeah, right at the front. Nice little runner. Back in the Milky. Milky's got a nice little dart too. That's a good little play by Casarina. Taken down nicely by Lay, but there we go. He's gone the box. And they're ready, but gee, the wing is quick up on the Stavanos. He's got it all day, and he sent it really deep. It's going to pull up before the try line, which gives Casarina room. He's not going to beat him for pace, but he runs straight into the defence. She's Casarina are going to have to get some pull around there because he, he's made it to ground now, which is good. But he did find trouble. 
And there's the settler. Is it going to go out? No. Straight down the throat of the number 16. Well, they didn't get too much distance thanks, thanks to a, a nice, sharp, flat defence. Lay was almost going to go to the box here, I reckon, but the forwards are beating to it. Oh, OK, and that's... Uncharacteristic mistake for the night. They haven't made a, they haven't made a huge amount of them. The forwards were set wide and they were just going to stretch that forward defence and then open them up again and they just butchered it. A lot of work to do here in the scrums, Kaz, because Uni have absolutely mauled them tonight and Uni have to be careful here because the last couple of scrums have just gone a bit overzealous, bought in and absolutely uh, overdone it, overcooked it. And as again, they're starting to look at the dominance just too quick. And Oakley's up on the halfback quick on the Russell, but it's gone wide. Into the centres and the centres, again, it's all messy, but they've still got the ball. Yeah, all over it. Because they're in a penalty and they just just bring something home for the fans. You can see Ladies Day has been a huge success over there. They've got good numbers. Just bring something home. Give them something to cheer about. I would like to see what the last 10 minutes, just to really give these centres a run for Casarina, just give them some opportunity to get a bit of confidence for the finals. They're big boys, I don't know where they've been hiding them, they'd be tearing up reserve grade if they were playing. Oh, terrible throw. Milky, he just landed it straight on the number five for Mott for University, who's then made a good 15, 20 metre run. And Willis, who's been taken nicely, didn't make any ground, it pushed him back probably another five. And oh, uh, good attack in defence. Casarina were up fast. Oh. And then Mott has been lined up again. Right under the rib cage and dropped. Good little passage of play by Casarina. The box wasn't huge. Okay, so the nine's got to get out of this. Lays all over that. If he doesn't get out of it, his arm's going to go up. Crowley at the back just setting it up. They're looking for another forward. Oh, geez, a terrible pass. He's given me nothing, but they've got out of that well. Geez, the bounce is nice for him, isn't it? Stavanos, so he's going to take him on because he knows he, with a bit of pace and a few gaps, he's got plenty of opportunity and he's just sent it deep. He's put Crowley on the back foot, but it hasn't gone out. Plenty of skid on the ground from the wet. Crowley to Marsh and Marsh again. Plenty of time, just wants just something to settle it up, just to get him out of trouble. You can see how wet it is away, the ball just keeps skidding across there, which always makes it hard to sort of uh, have any confidence taking on the chest once it hits the ground. Later, Russell. Russell's offered one. He stepped through. He stepped through one defender after the dummy. Oakley to Lay. Lay's just been the first, first attacker out there. Taking on a bit of a 5-8 roll, but he's got forwards backing him up everywhere, and he's spilt it. Again, line of the kick, Marsh. It just seems to be on repeat at the moment. They get the ball, Marsh goes out, same spot. Gets it back to where they, where he kicked it from again. They win the ball back and kick it out. taking their time. 
I'm not sure anybody had any doubt where it was going, but anyway, Lay's taken it off the top. Yeah, call it not straight. And Kaz calling for the scrum. Yeah, I think you need a lick on the ellipse at this. It's almost like, if I look at the back line here, that Uni, even though they're not feeding the ball, have got the back line set for a run. And Kazarina are just flat. Their only option, by the looks of it, is going to be kick, because it'll get back into the 22 from the pass, and they're just looking for the launch and get out of there. The scrum's held nicely, though, Kaz. They've just they've really held them really well there. But it's gone a cross-field kick. Geez, that's dangerous, because there's speed. Oh, the bounce is awful. It's just, oh, is he, he's taken... Oh, the... The bounce was messy, he slipped, he stumbled, he scratched, just could not get his hands on it. You can't half blame him, I mean, it is wet, but, oh, well, that's what Kazarina needed, they needed a little bit of luck. I don't reckon he'll be getting a dance here, an audition for dancing on ice anytime soon. But he, um... I'd be Kaz, I'd be throwing straight over the back, give the boys. Oh, Oakley steals it. So the half, and then Russell it darts inside, but he's been in the breadbasket and spilt it. And it's been spilt both ways. First knock on by, by University. The toll of the game, you can see, is just coming out on both teams now. Now, it hasn't been a bad half by um, on the scoreboard for Kazarina, even though they are 40, 46 nil. Um, it could have been a lot uglier. But I will give them, they have put some big hits on. They have, they have laid some big one-on-ones on, which has taken its toll a bit on University. But with a rolling forward pack uni you got, I mean, it's, it's, only gonna, it's not going to stop the tide, is it? Another good scrum by Kaz. They've found their mojo in the scrums, but the number eight, it's sloppy. The halfback was all over it. And Marsh, Marsh has had to clean up after, after what was a bit of a mess. And Crowley, Crowley with a rush kick, but he's got the roll. Stavanos with speed over the top. There was no one home. And Phillips is the only one near the ball, and there's pace. Oh, it's... Now, I don't know if that was what... I, it's hit the corner post, which is lying down. So that's been the waters going out. Geez, that was lucky, because there was some speed coming on top of uh, Phillips there. I think he um, wasn't sure what quite happened there, because when the post stopped the ball, which the post should have been sitting right up, the ball would have rolled out. The speed was coming from the defence and he was in trouble. There's Crowley for the boot and Stavanos has had a good game all night, you know, making plenty of yards and always been in a good position. Offloads it to Sanderson and Sanderson, just a nice little solid run. Taylor to the boppers and boom. They've just gone, we'll have another hit up here, thank you very much. And, that, and that's Jaden Warhope. He's, had a, he's done some miles tonight too, just bouncing blokes off here and there. Right on the line now. Geez, they're going to be hard to stop now because they've got forwards just, oh. Yeah, look, a bit of desperation, but they're going to have to go the try now. They've gone out wide. They, they had the gap. The tw yeah, the referee's called it back. He's called it back. He's had to stop play. I think there's going to be a yellow here because one of the Casarina players, it might have been the number 11, I think uh, Murray, went for the dive and 
tapped the ball down. He had no chance of making an intercept, so he's going to have to... He'd probably have a breather, I'd say. He'd know to be over. Oh, no card given, okay. I'm really showing my knowledge of the game tonight. I don't think I've called anything right when it comes to cards or penalties, but anyway, again, you know, just keep talking till I think of something to say. Two minutes, 15 to go, and um, I think both teams are ready for the sheds. Nothing to achieve for Uni tonight now. They've done their job. Casarina, well, they'll be a different side for the finals. There'll be plenty, there'll be a few blokes coming back, probably a few injured blokes coming back. Um, sorry, they're not out of it, but geez, they're taking on the dangerous dragons in the finals. Oakley held up, just making sure that the, uh, Casarina don't push too early, but geez, there's some good pressure. And again, from the side of the scrum, there's too much power on that university side, but they've held him up. They're doing a great job of holding him up. They might have held him up to and they have they did a great job of holding him up there's been a penalty given it's been a call from the um, sideline yeah an offside call there so geez any time they're 10 meters out like you've got to back them in uni and um the offside call to save Kaz there. They're not in any hurry to line up for this one. They want this to be the last play of the night. And with 50 seconds to go, they're going to make every opportunity of it count. They're taking their time, getting it to the back. Uh, and they're just going to line it up. They're a bit late to get there, but they got there anyway. Another couple of hit-ups. Geez, that's a good little run, isn't it? Oh, and it's been knocked out of his arms. Yeah, nice little strong run by the number seven, um, Strawn. Strawn's played all right tonight too. You'll probably haven't mentioned him at all, really, but he's played all right. They're going to have this penalty, have the line out, and um, that'll be stumps. That'll be all over, but... Again, a tough night for a proud club when you look at Casarina. What probably one of the strongest um, supporters, supporting groups in the competition, Casarina. A lot of supporters around the country. Huge supporter base in Darwin. Oakley just messes it up for him a bit, but then Marsh is quick on the ball. He's holding up Russell, and Russell's just trying to fight him for the ball, but Marsh has done a great job there. The forwards are just going get to get it wide. Having one last crack, but Phillips, he's just had his little run. Then it's been war hope. There's another arm out. There's another penalty for Casarino. They might get a piggyback up here and have one last crack at the line. So that we're going to have another line out after this. Play's going to go a bit. And Marsh, he's had a nice little dart. The number six. Refru and he, he got him just below the shoulders, so he gave an opportunity to hold him up a bit. And Phillips, Phillips went sort of went for, pulled the pass in, was going to throw the pass, but the defence was too quick, so he did well to hold it up. And Casarina, nice little chip. They got and again got the bounce, but no support, and he's been dragged out. There's not much point. And I'll give the referee there because um, they just need to get back and get ready because Casarina, they're going to try and offer something to the crowd. They're going to offer something to the supporters themselves, and this is good. I like it. I like how they're not, they could have just kicked it out and finished the game, but they thought, well, let's just have a crack at this. Let's just offer something. Yeah, they're going wide. Now get it out to the big boppers out wide. Yeah, there's plenty of room. Oh, the young fella, he just had to use hands. 
He's been hit early by the defence because the defence were offside. Little tap by Marsh. He's sort of a bit lost in two, two minds there. I mean, he's not sure what to do, but he's got it out to the centres again, who again has been called the pop, but it's, it's, oh, it's a mess. Crowley doing everything he can. And Rugu, he's just cleaned it up, but they've spilt it. It's all over the shop, and that's going to be stumps. All over. Knock on, and that is it. And I should not use cricket terms to finish a game of rugby. I do apologise. And Kazarina showed up in the second half, offered a little bit more. Um, but they'll be happy... It's done and dusted. They'll be looking forward to the week off. So next week is the Masters 10s up here in Darwin, which is a very popular event. Then the following week will be the first week of the finals, which you will see South play University, which will be an absolute corker. And then Casarina up taking on Dragons. Now, that game is anybody's because you've got a consistent club who obviously didn't turn up tonight in Casarina and Dragons, well they're firecrackers, they could offer anything thank you everyone on Facebook on NITV and on Rugby Explorer thank you for everybody in New Zealand and the US who are on tonight and we will see you next week